In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create a whole table. The file that I have open is called wholetable.idw and is located in the Chapter 5 Exercise folder. I'm going to start off by changing to the Annotation panel. And under the Annotation panel, if we scroll on down, you'll notice that we have three different selection methods for creating a whole table. The first one is going to be whole table selection, and in this case, you'd go back and you would select the individual holes that you want. So let me go ahead and quickly do that. Just going to pick a point in the view. I'm going to pick my 0, 0 point or the origin. And then you'll notice down here, it's telling me to select the edges of the hole. So I'm just going to select these three and right click create. Very important. Otherwise, Inventor won't know that you're done selecting your, your hole type. So if I zoom back in here, you can see it's now been labeled with hole A1 and then I got B1 and B2 directly related back to the whole table. So let me undo that and let's take a look at the next selection method and that's going to be view. I'm going to save that one for last. So let's go back and take a look at the selected feature option and you'll see that it's going to work exactly the same. I'm going to select a point inside the view. I'm going to locate the origin point. Now in this case I'm just going to select these two holes, right click create, place in the hole table, and you'll see what it did in this case is it went and labeled all of the identical holes. In this case I have four of the A and I have also four of the B holes here also represented inside this whole table. Again, I'm going to undo that, but you can see the difference between those two whole table types. And now let's go back and take a look at the middle one, which is whole table view. In this case, again, I'm going to select a point inside the view that I want, my top view. I'm going to place the origin point. I didn't have to select any of the holes because it's taking all of them that are in this view. And I should be specific with that. Those are going to be planned to this view. It's not taking the side views for these holes here. So let's take a look at here. You can see that all of the holes are labeled and they're all represented in the whole table. Now, if I want to go back and edit this, I can either double click on the whole table or you can right mouse click and select edit whole table. Let me bring the dialog box up here so we can see it a little bit cleaner. Now there's a couple different options. So let's start off with the two tabs. The first one here on the left is the formatting. And this is where we can go back and make a designation for the title. As you can see here, it just says whole table. Select the uh, different text fonts that you want. You can also go back and designate how do you want that line formatting to be on the outside or the inside and the header do you want it to the top to the bottom or do you want none as the case may be we can also designate different information inside these columns and if you wanted to add a column you would simply just select on column chooser and from the list you could go back and designate another column type that you want in this case, I'm just going to click Cancel because I don't want to do that. And let's look at the Options tab. Now, under the Options tab, in this case, we're not doing any of the, the merge, merging of the, the rows here. But uh, let me kind of see what happens here when I go back and turn on Numbering and Apply. You'll see that the letters are now gone and the holes are just des designated by a number. Again, I'm just going to double click on that. So let's undo that. Let's take a look at the next option. In this case, it's going to be the roll up. If I go ahead and click on apply, and let's again click OK here, and you'll see that it's just designating each of the holes as their individual type and not necessarily giving me the specifics labeled A1, A2, B1, B2, and so forth. Again, I'll double click on that. And I'm going to now select on the Combine Notes and click on Apply. And you can see what it did here. Instead of repeating the description, each of the whole designators here 
are still labeled A1, A2, B1, B2, so forth, but the description basically is being utilized for all of them in that group, which kind of makes it very easy to go back and see. The preserve tagging, I'm going to leave that on here for a second. With the preserve tagging, if I would go back and change a number of holes, the letter and number will be preserved. And we'll go back and we'll uh, see that as I go back and make a change. So you can also go back and designate the tag order that you want. In, in this case, I'm going to leave all the defaults. In the right-hand corner, the view filters, in this case, we can go back and designate what do we want to have actually be applied to this table. Again, we're just going to be doing all the holes in this case, but as you see, we can go back and also do the circular cuts. In this case, we don't have any in this model, but this is really not making any difference here. But you could also designate center, center points if you wanted. And if you were doing a sheet metal, we could also do the punch centers. And you can uncheck or check if you want the specific hole types that you want included in the chart. So let's go ahead and click OK. What I want to do now is I want to go back and make a change. So let's take a look at our circular pattern that we have. In this case, we have six of these holes, so B1 through B6. And I want to slide on down. I'm going to open up that part. And let's make a change to the circular pattern. And let's let's change that from 6 to 8. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that file. And then let's go back to the drawing file and you'll see that the hole types have been updated and the whole table itself has also been updated. But what's interesting here is you're no, you'll notice that the numbers are kind of out of sequence. Remember when I talked about that preserved option? So let's go back and double click on that. I'm going to uncheck preserve tagging and click OK. You'll notice that now that everything was relabeled in a nice order a little bit cleaner and easier to see. So that would be important if you need to, for manufacturing purposes, make sure that the whole label is always being maintained. In that case, you would go back and preserve it. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to, again, open up that file. And let's place in a new hole. Let's do a counter bore. And let's place it right around here. And we'll bring it 30 millimeters in. And let's do 25 millimeters up. And I'm going to make that 15 millimeters in diameter. And let's go ahead and save our file. Go back to our drawing. And you'll notice our new hole that we just placed is E1 with the correct information. See our 15 millimeter diameter. So what happens if we go back and change that hole type? Or let's in this case, let's just change the diameter back down to 10. And let's change the depth to 4. Click OK. So we can see that the hole has definitely changed in the model. We'll save our part file, go back to the drawing. And we can see that the designation inside the hole table has automatically been updated. So let's do one more thing. Let's go back to the whole table again, the part, and let's see what happens when I delete a part, or I'm sorry, a whole. Let's go back to our drawing. And you can see the E1 hole from the table has been removed as well as in the drawing view itself.